Hi, everyone, and welcome to a, I'm going to say, Time Bomb Comics edition of Words, Images, and Worlds, because on this episode, I'm talking with comics creator Steve Tanner. Steve, thank you for jumping in, joining, and taking a few minutes to talk with me today. Well, thanks very much for inviting us. It's, uh, it's great to be here, and I'm uh, looking forward to having a good chat with you. Yes, yes, likewise. Absolutely, likewise. I am going to mention a couple of titles, as I often do, and then I'm also going to ask about uh, a fun fact that I believe I've found out, if I've done my research correctly, and I hope I have. Um, so Flintlock would be one of the first titles that comes to mind. There's also Quantum, Spectrum, Captain Scarlet, and Major... How do you say this name, is the question. <laughs> <laughs> um. It, it, it's it's pronounced uh, rock rockana or rockana depending rockana. on. I've heard it. I've heard it, but it said both. But I've also heard it said major rockana as well. Um, right. So uh, right. when when I first heard uh, the inspiration for, for for the name, actually came from overhearing um, a conversation about tarot cards, and they oh, referenced cool. the major rockana, and in my head that kind of popped in as like, who is that? Who is major rockana? Um, so, um, so that that's where the character came from. But, I've, but I, I've kind of seen it kind of references Rakana and Rakana. Um, e either one, either one. Um, I wouldn't ask her directly. No. She, she, <laughs> she, she, she. You know, she, it's not the sort of question she would respond well to. True, true, true. Um, so I, I found out. Did you get a start in comics journalism? Is that right? And then you made your way to working in comics. Is that? accurate research or is that um something that's just out there that i, I mean I, mislocated? I mean it it, it, may, it may be a little bit of mislocation there i um i i mean i have done um kind of i've, re I've done reviews and, and features for uh for comics in, in, in the past mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but i actually started out in comics uh when i was in my in my late teens, early twenties. Uh, gotcha. Go gotcha, so obviously quite some time ago now, as you as you can imagine. Um, so we're looking at the, the late eighties, early early nineties, um, and and I and I had my first kind of a professional work published in nineteen ninety two, um, and then um, just through personal circumstance, I found my work. I found out because I'm you know working in a completely different environment uh, and no longer creating comics uh, for for a number of years. And then decided to get back into it again in 2006. Uh, and since 2006, I've been constantly kind of uh, creating comics and, and working with creators who are also creating comics. Love it, love it. What? Um, how? How did you know initially that comics were the space that you wanted to create in? I think it's it's a. I mean, you probably get the same kind of answer from a lot of people you ask about the super comics. It's just that kind of that passion that you get for the medium. Um, which, which then transcends being just a reader of comics. And there's nothing wrong with being just a reader of comics. That, that's fine, because it's the readers of comics that the creators need um, to tell to the, as, as the opportunity to tell the stories to. Um, but it is very, definitely that kind of whole idea. As soon as I kind of realised and had that understanding that people were involved in actually making them uh, and the different roles that they were doing. Um, I, I mean, I, I'd, always, I'd always had a, had a kind of fondness for um, writing anyway. Um, and creative writing, but suddenly being able to kind of realise you actually write a comic script as opposed to to a TV script or or a, or, or, a, or a short story, um, it, 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 that that was really where it unlocked. And at the time I was getting in, in, in into this, this would would have been in the um, early to mid eighties. So it suddenly had people like um, Alan Moore appearing. When suddenly the 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 the, the, the writing aspect of comics. Was becoming just as exciting as as the artists until that time it had really all been driven by by the artists i mean they were still great writers but it, 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 it the attention was it had always been pretty much on the artists until people like alan moore came came along and then suddenly it became about the story um and i think then it was that having that understanding of how a comic script was was, was written and how it was laid out um, and it just seemed a, a lovely way to tell stories. And the other thing as well is the collaboration. Um, the idea of collaborating with, 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 with an artist to kind of realise, you know, your, your vision as, as a comic. Now, mm -hmm. back, back in the 80s, I was also trying to be, be, be an artist as well. I quickly realised that wasn't my strength, you know. Um, so, it, so, so since then, it, it's always been writing comics. And, and 
ever since since back in the 80s and, and even now and, and it's something which never gets old is the actual thrill of actually seeing those initial pages back whether they're roughs or, or pencils or inks or thinning the, the seeing no seeing your, your what you've written as a, as a script um in, in in words just being realized as a comic that is just a remarkable feeling um and, and it gives me a, a just as big a buzz now as it did when, when i first started kind of trying to do write me on comics when i when i was in my teens love it love it i uh, i imagine that passion was what brought you back in 2006 as well yeah kind of i mean the, i mean because i mean I, I was out of i mean I, i'd always read comics i never stopped reading comics so i'd stop creating them and um the circumstance took me kind of away from 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 the comics community because in, until the um the the the, the uh, early 1990s i would always attend kind of a comic convention now back back in back in the 1980s they, they only used to have one comic convention a year in the uk which was held in london every september and it became almost like this this annual pil pilgrimage for british comic fans to kind of go to the, to this event because that was the only thing you you would have um and through circumstances i i you know i, I was i drifted away from that um and I hadn't been to a convention then for a good kind of 13, 14 years. Um, and it was in 2006 I saw a convention uh, advertised again uh, near where, where I was living. And I thought, oh, it'd be good to do that again, just to kind of have some fun. So I just, I, you know, pitched along to, to, to that con, just expected to kind of go there and kind of make, this is some just some panels and maybe buy some back issues to check out some new comics just the normal kind of thing that you would do um and what but when i got there so there was these these tables of, of, of kind of independent creators who created their own comics now there'd always been guys who'd create their own comics at, at, the, at the conventions i'd been to previously but it was very much obvious that they were kind of like homegrown you know, they, 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 most of the time they, they were kind of black and white. They, they were kind of very much hand produced. Um, but they, they were kind of labors of love, really, rather than, rather than, than, than anything more. And there was nothing wrong with that. They were still entertaining. But suddenly there were these indie comics that were, that were there. And they were just as good, if not better, than the stuff you would see in, in the comic store. And I, I ended up then spending at, at, at the, the con just speaking to these indie creators and, and came away with just a huge stack of the, these kind of, you know, exciting indie comics. But as well as coming away with that stack of comics, I came away with that determination that I wanted to be back at that con the following year in 2007 mm -hmm. with my own comic and be behind the table. That's it kind of reignited that whole kind of, kind of the floodgates open and that's what i did so one year later i that you know that that's where i was i was there sat there at the con behind the table with my own banner and that's where time bomb comics first appeared mm -hmm. uh, and i had my, my first, first comic that i produced um on the table um and that's what started all and that first comic it was it was just you know it was it was a one shot 24 page one shot and uh, you know in hindsight it was terrible. It was a terrible, ter you know, it, I mean, it was, it was nicely printed. That's what I can say about it. It was really nicely printed. I mean, it was even lettered in, uh, in comic sans for goodness sake. It was, it was really, it was as raw as, as, as they come, but it was the start. Um, and it, it, it grew from that point because one of the nice things about it, even though that this, this, this comic was, was raw, um, the, 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 the community that I met, the comics community kind of embraced straight away what I was trying to do. Uh, and there was that support and there was that encouragement. Um, and, and that that was how it started. Really. So, and, and and Time Bomb even, even comes from, from that first attempt, the name Time Bomb, because yeah. that, that first one shot, it, it was about um, time travel, where the time comes in. And I had no idea if, if trying to produce my own comic uh, would bomb or not. I had no idea. So that's where the bomb came from. So, <laughs> so the, the name itself harkens back to, to, to that very first attempt of trying to try to do something. Um, as it was, it, it turned out to, uh, to be quite a quite a, a fun journey. I think journey is the word that people kind of use these days, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah. And now here, here we are kind of 17, 17 years later. Um, and yeah, things, things, things are going well. Time bomb is now one of the, one of the mainstays of, um, indie comics in the uk mm -hmm. um so yeah it, it, it's been it's been it's been quite exciting but i still get that same buzz 
And I think that's the important thing. I get the same buzz now from doing it as I as I as I did it then. Um, and, and and I think that's really important. And that because if you ever lose that buzz, that's when you need to step back. That's when you may, maybe need to kind of go recharge. Um, you know, but I've still got the buzz. So as long as I've still got the buzz, I'll carry on doing it. I love it. And may it keep buzzing. May it keep buzzing. Um, curious about what you would share with listeners about the kinds of stories that you're drawn to with Time Bomb Comics. Uh, we, we time, I mean, it's, it's interesting because we, we I kind of we, the, the stuff we, we, we do is kind of being described as quite British, um, mm-hmm. but that's more by accident than design. It, we don't set out to do that. I think it partly is to do with, do with the kind of sensibilities of how comics are in the UK and how most kind of creators, certainly of creators of, of my generation, um, encountered comics in the UK. Uh, comics were, 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 were kind of mainly weekly. Um, you wouldn't get you wouldn't get monthly comics in the UK um, unless they were imported uh, American comics. So so through I mean there's there's been a thriving kind of comics um, industry um, in in the UK since since the, the 1930s, but predominantly it was weekly comics. Um, so so most of us as we were growing up in in the 60s and 70s, that's how we buy our comics. And and there would be a, a huge range of, of titles. You know, we're, we're looking at 50, 60 titles, different titles coming out per week um, yeah. of, of all different kind of types. And they'd usually kind of fall in, 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 into three kind of broad types. You would have the you'd have the comics for, for, for boys, which is more the kind of like the, the, the war kind of action adventure kind of stuff. You'd have the comics for girls, which all for, for some reason were always named after a girl's name. So they'd have the titles like Mandy and Judy and Jilly and. Bunty and Debbie and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and, and and they tended to have more kind of act, uh, they had more kind of adventure stories in, um, but obviously with kind of female leads. And then the final type of comic was the was the the humor titles, um, which which used to have one page one page humor stories, and they were aimed at, at, at both both boys and girls. Mm-hmm. Um, so there there they were things like you know Beano Dandy those kind of things um and i think because of that we tended not to kind of see superheroes very much um mm-hmm. because they, they weren't used they, they weren't usually featured at all in in the kind of the the, the the homegrown british comics so i think a lot of people you know we, grow, we tended to, to kind of see those broadly different styles of, of of genre within comics rather than predominantly kind of like the, the kind of the superhero comics so i think that that kind of I think that reflects a lot on I think on the type of comics that British creators tend to tend to produce. Um, so they, they they tend to be more kind of you know to do with you know ad- adventure or history or or science fiction or horror or all that kind of stuff. And I think it, it probably encapsulated by things like 2000 AD, which which came out in 1977 and is still going today and uh-huh. still going weekly. It's always been weekly. Um, so I, I think. It's that kind of thing that we tend to draw to. And so personally, the stuff I tend to do tends to be that kind of um, adventure side of things. Um, I, I mean, I, I used to enjoy reading a lot of comics which had historical adventures in. Um, so, so you know, they, 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 they'd be stories that we set in, 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 in Victorian times or or the 20s or, or the Middle Ages, that kind of stuff. Those are the kind of things that, that I remember really enjoying. And, and that, you know, my job in that comes through from, the type of of work that I do and, and work that I enjoy. I mean, you, you mentioned Flintlock, and that's a per- per- perfect example mm-hmm. uh, of, of that being, you know, you know, being the the essence of, of the comics that excited me uh, when I, when I was growing up, and also that awareness of you know what can be done with with, with within comics in the UK, which aren't nece- weren't necessarily still being being done. Um, so those kind of those kind of broad things. So so we, we, people, you know, we, now with, with the rise of comic shops and that kind of stuff, I mean, since since the, the 1980s, it, it, it's much easier to get Marvel and DC and those kind of things now because most uh, major cities will have at least one um, comic comic store. Um, so so th- so th- there's that kind of market now where where people can 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 buy Batman and Spider Man all the all the rest and the image stuff. Um, but there's still now this 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 huge community uh, of, of indie comics being created in in the UK. Uh, what what's changed is that um, in in the you know up until the 1990s, 
most British comics were, were available um, only through news agents rather than comic stores. Um, the exception was 2000 AD. Um, now, um, very few British comics are available in news agents. The majority of British comics are now available um, at things like conventions, to things like Kickstarter, those that, those kind of direct from creator kind, kind of, kind of um, sources. Um, um, and local comic shops may kind of carry a, a local creator's comic, um, but it, it, it's still, you know, that, 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 that's, that's the market now. That's how the market has changed. Um, and, and I think that's why in the UK, things like conventions now have, have become such so popular because people go there now to get their, to buy their British indie comics. Um, and things like Kickstarter is very popular in the UK for the same reasons. You know, there's a lot of people that, they, you know, the only comics they buy uh, are through Kickstarter. Um, so, so it's all, it's all you know, the, the, the whole kind of, the whole, the market for comics is changing, it's evolving. Um, and, and now and again, I kind of read these kind of things, you know, online or blogs that, you know, our comics are dying. You know, <laughs> dead, uh, and it's not. I, it's just evolving, and yeah. I think sometimes when, 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 when you don't like the pace of the evolution or the way that the evolution is going, you kind of try to ignore it. Um, and I imagine we, you know the, the same conversations would have been had, um, probably in letter form, when um, that the pulps were being replaced by the comics. You know, they're, they're, it's that same. It's that same kind of thing. You know, the, the, the creativity will always be there. Um, comics, you know, if comics are where they are now, that they'll be there. The, the, the market is changing. It doesn't mean that people aren't buying comics. It just means that people are looking for the different kind of comics that excite them. And I think if, if you're if you're if you're someone who who likes a particular kind of comic that is no that is kind of less as popular, it, 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 it's, it's kind of a difficult place to be in because yeah. um, I mean I, I don't know how it relates to to. to in the US, but in, in supermarkets here, we, we, we have kind of um, graphic models, for, for, but but they're things like Heartstopper, and they're yeah. things like uh, Dogman, which which is that, that you know, and people are buying you know buying them in droves, but the average person in in you know in Britain, well, my my kind of age or thirty plus, who who's into comics like two thousand AD, you know, they're not interested in those kind of comics. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't mean people aren't interested in comics. It just means you know they may not mention the type of comics that you want to see, and I think yeah. sometimes that can, that can be that can be a bitter pill to kind of swallow and and, and get your head around. Um, but at the same time, there's 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 still this absolute abundance of independent creativity, um, and once you tap into that, you, you you can find something that will excite you, and I'm sure that's the same in in the US as well. Yeah, very well said. Very well said. I'm just thinking about what you were saying about death versus evolution. And, you know, I suppose if someone's just looking at one piece of the process, they might say, oh, it's death. But absolutely, they're they're um, growing and tradition changing and all of those things. So I uh, love that movement forward and that positive messaging about comics. Um, speaking of such things any particular projects that are on the way from you and anything that you'd like to mention in, in that way in terms of creating as well as where listeners can go to learn more? Well, I mean, you know, like, like any, any, any company these days, we, we've got a website, which is timeofcomics.com. Um, and we also on the, the main social media platforms. Um, so we've got presence on all of those. So anyone can quite easily find uh, find us. In terms of what we're doing, I mean, I mean, you, you, you mentioned Quantum uh, right at the start. And, and Quantum has, has become our kind of flag, flagship project over the last year. And it, it'll continue to be. Um, because Quantum um, is, is our kind of effort to try and get a comic back into the news agents like they used to be. And like they're, they're no longer really done. Um, so we launched Quantum um, in, in, in April last year. Uh, and the idea with Quantum is to produce, is to produce um, an, an anthology because British comics are pretty much always all um, traditionally anthologies. Uh, it, and it's a great way of working. It means, it means there's some, hopefully there's something that will appeal to, 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 to everyone um, who, who picks it up and has a read. Um, so, so, that's what we've been doing since 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 last April. 
Uh, we've been producing uh, Quantum, um, which is a bi-monthly comics that comes out every two months. And the, the, the market that has predominantly been news agents. Um, so we, we've just been targeting news agents in the UK, but also it, it is available in, in being available in news agents um, outside the UK as well. So we have it's carried in news agents in Australia, um, in um, Germany, in the Netherlands, Sweden, Malta. Um, I believe Barnes and Noble took a cut, took a few um, o o over in the states. Um, but but what, what we're, we're doing with with, with the, and I think Midtown Comics carry. That takes some whenever whenever they're, they're they're released, um. But until recently, that's been the only kind of comics traditional comic shop that's actually been able to be able to get quantum from. Um, one thing we're doing this year, we're making quantum available um to all comic stores through Diamond, um mm -hmm. to see to see oh, what the pickup are there. But but we're doing it in a kind of a kind of staggered way because the focus is still very much on the, the news agents. So um, I said issue six of, of Quantum comes out in, in about uh, 10 days time. Um, and in January, I think January's uh, Diamond Catalog, they have this, uh, the, the, the solicit for Quantum issue one for the comic stores. So we'll, we'll be releasing the Quantum through, through, the, through, the, you know, the, through Diamond, but okay. it'll be um, later than the news agents because the driver is the news agents um so so that's been that's been our, our kind of our, our big project and that remains our, our big project and um it was it was a very different it's been a very different way of of working to how we're we're traditionally used to um because you know previously before quantum came along it was kind of you know through through conventions through kind of di direct web store sales and yeah you know um friendly comic shops uh kickstarter that kind of stuff um mm -hmm. and and you think uh, you know and it was it, it was a nice little healthy kind of turnaround with, with our books it was great but qu uh, but quantum has kind of taken it to kind of a different level um the, the thing that's been really d challenging with quantum um was we thought okay yeah every two months that's fine yeah, yeah but those deadlines they come around bang bang <laughs> bang so quick yeah and and, that, and that's that's but that's been the real kind of surprise so so the you know the, the people who produce things like 2008D, where they're producing um 30 36 pages every week um the the, the respect for the guys that are actually doing that is huge because you, you just get an insight into how you need to work or the way you need to work and then the planning ahead and that kind of thing because these these are deadlines for for retailers you, you, these are not things you can it's not like you can kind of push a message out to your kickstarter back and say guys sorry we're going to be two weeks late you can't do that you've just got to make sure you you hit you, you hit those those on sales spots um so yeah so that's what we're doing with quantum and then i said so um we, we're coming up to the end of the first year of publishing quantum um so um and now we're already planning well into to the second year of that, uh, and, and so it, it that's that's gone well. Um, to be perfectly honest, it's it's been it was it's been scary and exciting in equal measure. It re it really has because it is it is completely different than anything we've done before. Uh, but the nice thing is we've tapped in, we found an audience, um, because there is an audience, um, in the, certainly in the UK. Who even though there aren't there hardly any British comics available in news agents anymore. They still buy just buy their comics from news agents. So mm -hmm. what they see on the shelf, they will buy. And if it's not on the shelf, then you know they, they won't be aware of it. So um, it, it's been great to kind of reach that a whole new audience. Um, and of course, that audience have discovered that you know we're not a brand new publisher. We've been around for a little while, and of course, we have this this size of, now have a sizable back catalog. So mm -hmm. what we what we've seen as well are people that have been buying quantum, discovering quantum and and time bomb and, and, and the craze that we that that, that that you know are featured. Um they can order stuff from our online store um and then you know catch up on, on what they've missed. And, and that's been great to see as well, because that's been a great knock positive knock on effect. Um so yeah, so it, it, it it's good. I mean, and, and hopefully what we're doing, uh, we're hoping it will encourage some of the other smaller indie british publishers to to, to go down the same route we're, we're really hoping so because i think it'd be great to see but you know it, it it's it, it's a big jump so um it's it, it remains scary it remains exciting 
but it's something we're still completely committed to. So we're looking forward to seeing how that develops. That's the kind of bait that that's really the, the main thing that we that we deal with. We, we've still got other little side kind of projects going on, um, but the focus is still very much kind of quantum because I think it it presents so many opportunities for us. Um, and I'm quite excited to see how um, the qu quantum one in diamond is is it is received. To be perfectly honest, when when, mm -hmm. when the quantum one hits kind of all the all the normal comic comic shops in in a couple of months' time, um, I'm just really looking forward to seeing how that lands um, to see what people think of it. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, wishing you well, as you said, the journey. Uh, wishing you well on the the creative journey ahead, and I appreciate the work that you're doing in comics and the passion that most definitely comes through for the medium and for stories. It, it, I mean, I think um, it's a great thing to be part of the comics community. I mean, some people call it the comics industry, but I prefer the word community because I always find it seems to be more for community, certainly from for, for my experience. Um, and maybe it's just at the level that we're at, I don't know, or more the indie side, that um, we, we don't have that kind of, a, you know, we, we, a lot of our, our the, the people that are good friends are also publishers. They're also, you know, they're, 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 they're putting out their own thing. And one of the nice things that I like to kind of, we, when we have a, you know, go to cons and, and, and you're following things, the news and see, seeing what's coming up, is when you see that, you know, so, so, so another creator that you 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 know and, and respect and like, mm -hmm. they've got a great project coming. Um, and it's, it's really good then to be able to support that project yourself. I mean, that's one of the nice things about it. There's so much going on. And, and it's always so exciting. I think that's one of the nicest things about being involved with comics on a creative side. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, well said. And thank you for sharing for, from the community. And uh, thank you for the time, Steve. Glad to talk again anytime. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Great to talk with you. Thanks.